Welcome back to our show. Father Lavelle and I now will talk about Saint André Bessette. Uh, it's interesting because he was born in Quebec, um, uh, French, Canadian, and uh, he has an interesting background. Uh, he began, he's a Holy Cross brother, um, but he had lots of issues in his life. And let's talk a little bit about uh, what might have been going on uh, in the country and in the world around the time of, uh, of his life. Well, he lived a long life. He uh, dies at the age of 91, so uh, he's born in 1845. So to put that in sort of some perspective here in our own country, that's, uh, you know, 15 years before the Civil War, and yet he lives until just a few years before the beginning of World War II. Uh, so when you look at not just the United States, but North America, because certainly there were ramifications uh, for Canada. Uh, with si the Civil War, you see slaves journeying all the way up north beyond our borders into Canada. And then certainly Canada's connection not only to the United States, but to Great Britain uh, with the effects of uh, World War II. He would have lived a life that saw a great deal, just in the events of ordinary life. But in his relationship with his community, uh, he remains uh, a lay brother, uh, he is hardworking, he's industrious, uh, he is not what would have been judged to have been a great intellect. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in his religious order he is set on a track to really be one of those um, images that we might conjure of the monks in the field, you know, who work the land, who take care of things around the monastery, who are just um, a daily laborer for the Lord. His life truly would have been ora et labora. He would have worked and prayed. And it's interesting because uh, you had mentioned that he was um, not one who would have been considered a scholar. Actually, he, uh, he could not read or write when yeah. he entered the Holy Cross Brothers. And so there was that, that somewhat of an impediment right there and then and there. Uh, he was also physically sickly. So as a child, even through his entire life, he understood uh, what suffering was. Mm -hmm. And there's this whole uh, sense that, that he ministered to those who suffered in a very healing way. Uh, history tells us that thousands of people came to Brother Andre uh, for a blessing and a healing. Mm -hmm. And so many people would have gone through his life and there would have been a sense that he would have resonated with them mm -hmm. because he would have understood their pain. He would have understood their sickness and their suffering. And uh, he would have understood how Christ is really the person to go to during this, this uh, calamity in, in one's physical life and impairment. Um, what's also interesting is that uh, he, he was canonized not very long after uh, his passing in 1937, but it wasn't until 2010 that he was actually canonized by Benedict the 16th. Um, so there was this long gap there. I, I remember, and I was mentioning it to you before the taping, that I knew a woman uh, at one of my parishes, actually at St. Joseph in Austintown, who personally knew uh, Brother Andre. She was a child at the time, but she, she knew him. And she had uh, some dealings with him uh, in uh, community life when he was there. And so she oftentimes said to me uh, at Mass, I wonder when they're going to canonize uh, Brother Andre, because there was this long period of time uh, when he was beatified to his canonization. Uh, sadly enough, I believe that she passed away prior to uh, his canonization, but I think they're hopefully rejoicing together in heaven right now. But let's talk a little bit about uh, this, this healing ministry to the sick, to the downtrodden, uh, to, uh, to the physically ill. How difficult is that for someone who is sickly to do that, let alone someone who is healthy ministering to the sick. Well, I would agree with you when you said that he could understand uh, their difficulties and their dilemma. I think the, the, the beautiful gift in his ministry to them is to not focus on himself. Uh, you know, too often we can look inward uh, when we're sick, whether it's physical or emotional or spiritually, and we can close ourselves off 
or at times, sadly, even become jealous when others have good health or when we know someone has been ill and they are perhaps cured and yet we're still struggling with an illness. It takes a great deal of personal strength mm -hmm. to truly be there for others with the multitudes that we understand he was there for. Um, and to rejoice with them when they were healed, to continue to commiserate with them uh, when days were difficult, um, and to not have that kind of wear away at his own strength and his own courage and his own ability to witness uh, to them. I, I think it's very interesting too, as you said, uh, uh, we have many saints who their beatifications come shortly after their death, but then the canonization process takes hold and we have to look for the miracle and it has to be tested and, and evaluated. Why the beatification can happen so soon is there are these saints that there is really just this groundswell from the people. And we could say there was nothing extraordinary about Brother Andre's life. Yes, he healed many, but he was a, a, a faithful brother who worked hard and who really the hallmark of his presence was a devout prayer and a love of people and wanting to witness and be with them in their illness, in their struggles. Uh, does he build any great institution? You know, does he travel the world as a missionary? No, but the groundswell was from those countless people who were inspired by his story. And then many years later, uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict canonizes him, um, recognizing not only a miracle, but recognizing that we need more examples like Andre. Interestingly enough, in 1937, when Brother Andre died, a million people reportedly passed by his coffin. I mean, back then, that would have been unprecedented. Absolutely. To put it in perspective, that would mean that every man, woman, and child who is a Catholic resident in our diocese would have to pass that casket five times. That is an incredible amount of people. Um, but they're witnessing, and, and again, that groundswell, that there was something so holy and so special about this man that even in death they wanted to behold him. And we want to say that his feast is celebrated in the United States on January 6th and in Canada on January 7th because... In our country, we now celebrate Epiphany, which traditionally had been January 6th, on the Sunday after uh, the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, or New Year's Day. Uh, and in Canada and many other countries, they still hold true to the January 6th. So, so important a saint for Canada. Uh, this way, he's never replaced on the calendar. He's always celebrated.